Hi, welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. And I'm Dr. Paul Zalzo. Paul, today we're having a big, big day. Yeah. A unique day for us. Never done this on video before. Never done this at all before. Ever. We are uh, going to talk about COVID-19 testing and we are actually going to each have a test performed on each other by each other. That's right. And we're making this video because we've heard some people are reluctant to go get the COVID test. Uh, for whatever reason, if you've you know, been around someone or you've got symptoms and you're supposed to go get tested, people are afraid to do it. So we just want to show how easy it can be, hopefully. And they're afraid because you're supposed to put a big long Q-tip up your nose into your brain. So we're going to dispel some of those myths and you're going to get to, you're gonna get to see one. It doesn't go into your brain. Not in your brain. We'll show you that. So you can see here in this image uh, provided by the CDC uh, that the head is tilted back about 70 degrees and the swab is inserted through the nostril and it just tickles the back of the nasopharynx. It does not go into the brain. It does not go very deep. Just tickles the back of the nasopharynx just to get a secretion, a sample, to check if there's any virus in there. Okay, so let's talk about testing. So we've talked a lot about COVID before. Everyone knows a lot about COVID. There are really, Paul, three main ways to test for COVID-19. Right, three main tests that are out there now, some other under development. Like styles of tests. Yeah. Okay, what's the first one, most common one? I would say polymerase chain reaction, PCR testing, which is kind of considered your gold standard right now. Uh, using a swab, you get a sample from the nasopharyngeal area, and that's taken uh, into the lab where some... Um, uh, DNA, RNA, or some genetic material uh, that might have been picked up is amplified in the lab. So it's a two-step process, really. Right. The sample takes some processing to expand the amount of material that you got in, with some special chemicals in a machine. So step one, expand whatever they found. And then step two, try and detect what it is after amplifying it first. And that's why it takes a little longer, right? Longer. This is not an instant test. So it goes away. It's a little more expensive. Yeah. but it, it's really good so it's really sensitive it essentially finds a lot of the positives or very a very sensitive. very high percentage yeah you can have very low viral load and still get it detected so before you're symptomatic and well after and well after you're not even contagious anymore you could still test positive on a pcr test that's why it's such a great test good test gold okay. standard gold standard okay number two antigen testing antigen would, testing. would you say that that is the silver standard i would say <laughs> you could get some do you have an aunt named jennifer no, sister. You could, you could have a antigen, which would give you a false positive. <laughs> right? You want an ant named body. Yeah, sure. Because you got the antibodies. But got no. it. Okay, so antigen testing. Yes. So that's basically where you take a sample. Right. And those kind of tests got real bits of virus in them, so you know. You know they're good. good. Yep, yeah, it's made with bits of real panther, so you know it's good. It's quite pungent. Uh, you know they're good. No, they have the protein in the, in the test kit. It has the proteins that are similar to the ones on the virus. Uh, they have the antibodies to those proteins in the test kit. And we've talked about those before. Like that's the whole basis of our immunity system. They go to find these viruses and the little spike proteins and then we make antibodies against them. So this test takes advantage of that type of stuff to find the protein, find an antibody that matches it and that becomes a positive test. And that says, hey, it's positive. You have the antigen. Auntie Jennifer, you have that in there. So the antibody in the test kit detects it and then gives you a signal like a line on a piece of filter paper or some kind of signal that says, yeah, we detected it. Problem with those tests though? Well, is that there's, they're, not as, they're not as sensitive. Yeah. You don't find as many. Yeah, they're, they're not as, um, you, can't pick up, you, can't, you can't pick up as low a viral load as you can with PCR testing, okay? But the advantages of those tests is they're inexpensive. And they're faster. Very fast results on the order of minutes. Instead of hours, you're getting a result in minutes and they're very easy to use. You don't need a special lab. You can do this at, it's, it should, right now, they should still be done by health professionals. And I'm not aware of any test kits out for home use, but um, they can be done at an institution like your work or your school or something like that with a nurse or something or another healthcare professional there. And you can do lots of tests. It's too bad they couldn't repurpose like those one hour photo places. Remember back in the day when you'd bring yeah. your film and then you'd wait around and then you yes. get pictures right away because it was you couldn't wait to see what they That's were. That's right. That was the best. Well then we got digital pictures. Digital, don't need it. And so then the third test is something called a serology test. So that's actually a blood test that sees whether or not a, you've had exposure to the virus, and B, more importantly, whether or not your body has mounted some type of response for it, and then that's what it's testing. So it's testing your inherent ability to fight the virus by having previous exposure. Right, 
and those tests aren't 100 percent yet either nope but they are interesting in that they do show your body's response to being exposed to the virus right so today we are are going to demonstrate uh, a rapid test Paul. So yes. this is something that's coming down a lot of companies are in investigating and and trying to develop these tests quickly so that we can get them out for a lot of different reasons what what are the what are the benefits of the rapid test well the rapid test like we said it's rapid it's in the name okay. you can get the answers right away they're much easier to use uh, so you don't need any special equipment special lab or anything like that yep uh and um they're a little cheaper right they're a little cheaper so yep. you can do them at the institution any any shortcomings of the rapid test because most and there's a lot of controversy about hey should, where should we use these or how much should we use them um, right. some of the controversy is around the fact that you need to have a fair amount of virus right yeah you're probably fairly infectious at that time if you've got enough virus to uh, be uh, detected because you need your body to amplify like the pcr test your body is the yes. that first stage of the pcr That's test. good way to look at it yeah you've done the pcr on your own yeah and now you've got, got lots of virus load. Whereas PCR will amplify whatever you have in there so they can pick up an even small amount. So the thought is that this might play a role maybe in schools or in factories or settings where there's a whole bunch of people that have a, a potentially low risk, but if something happens, then it could spread really quickly. So we airports. want to try to stomp it at airports. Oh, travel, good idea. travel. Right. So it, I think it'll, I think these tests, they're just getting approval from regulatory bodies. I think they're going to be an extra tool that we have in addition to vaccines yes. to uh, fight COVID. And the, the one other thing about them is people have to be a little bit careful because if you do get a test that's negative, it doesn't guarantee that you don't have the virus. So similar to the vaccine, um, you never know if you're completely immunized and you don't know if you're spreading it. So you can't just be all willy nilly. No. You still have to be careful. Oh, always got to be careful. Take precautions. Okay. So who's going to go first? So uh, why don't we flip a coin? You got a coin? I do not. I'll use an imaginary okay. coin. Okay. Ready? Okay. Ready? Yeah. Call it in the air. Heads. Dude, it's tails. I'm sorry. I had a feeling that was going to happen. Okay, so I'm going to go first. All right, we're going to do this. Let's, we're going to step into transition to the lab. To the lab. The testing facility. Okay, so here we are in our testing facility. You can tell it looks about the same. Same as our studio. Yep. Same as our OR. Yes. Um, so we're going to be testing uh, Dr. Weeding today with the COVID-19 SARS-CoV-2 rapid test kit uh, made by Novamed. This is called the No-Step test kit. Uh, it is uh, still under regulatory approval right now. I think it's in the final stages, but there's going to be a lot of these types of tests becoming available uh, in the near future. Potentially hundreds even. Yeah, there are hundreds under yeah. review right now. So this is the Nova bed. This is the no step. Okay. So it's a lot like uh, basically a pregnancy test kit. Really? Have you taken a pregnancy test before? I've not. Thank you for asking Mel. Okay. Um, another thing is that this, like we said before, should be administered, administered by a healthcare professional and they would be in full PPE. We're both vaccinated, so this is just for demonstration purposes, but mask, shield or glasses, plus probably a gown. So yeah, um, probably full an care. N95. N95 mask. And gloves, but we've both been vaccinated. And the investigator wants to stand off to the side uh, as well. The, the person who's going to be doing the test probably be standing off the side in case the, the patient coughs, sneezes or something like that. Land, so when people come into my office, they a lot of times to receive an injection, they're like, you know, I don't really like needles. So this is the point where I say, I really don't like stuff jammed up my nose. And then I'd say answer that. Well, I don't think anybody really likes anything stuck up their nose. So we're going to follow the instructions here. Um, and actually, can we show a quick picture of yes. where this swab is going to go? Right, because a lot of the concern for people is like, it's going in my nose, but like, can it reach my brain? Like, I think some people really believe that their brain is being swabbed, and that is clearly not the case. There are bony obstructions to that, so. Yeah, so it's going in, and it's gonna hit at or near the nasopharynx, okay? So it goes in about, really, about five centimeters-ish uh, in the nose. Uh, and uh, that's where it wants to get the sample. And then the, the, the person who's testing you is just gonna spin it a little bit left and right and hold it in there, and there's different, uh, you know, numbers of seconds that they keep it in and things like that. But generally it's not too bad. So again, I'd be wearing full PPE here to do this, but I know Dr. Weeding is not a risk because he has no symptoms. He hasn't been around anyone with SAR. With it looks uh, really COVID. long. It's a Q-tip. It's just a, it's like it's a skinnier Q actually than Q-tip, yeah. way smaller. It looks like a Q-tip that might play in the NBA one day. <laughs> Minute bowl. So I'm going to take this Q-tip out. And your your person who's doing the test, if any healthcare professionals are watching, um, you don't want to hold it like this. No, you want to hold it not even like this. It's going to be held like a pencil or something very gentle, uh, because you don't. Want to, in case you do get any obstruction, you want to make sure that you're not poking through any major obstruction. So very gentle. This is a measure of trust here. Yeah. 
So Brad, just put your head back. Just gonna insert this. It's gonna go in about five <laughs> or six centimeters, split it around. <laughs> It, does, it. it just tickles. It doesn't hurt. It just tickles like, like you want to sneeze. And that's also probably why they wear the PPE, right? right. So you don't sneeze on the person, especially yeah. a big viral load. So yeah. actually that wasn't too bad. Yeah. So then it says, repeat this nine more times. No, I'm just kidding. It does not say that. Okay. So now we're going to put in our test kit. The back of the instructions here gives us clear instructions. Um, I don't know if I just going to read this. You see this one, pull out, okay, one, insert the swab into the hole. So you can see here, there's actually like a little, almost like a dispenser. It looks just receptacle. like, it looks just like Dr. Weening's nose and right. we're going to insert it into here. Okay. And step two is pull out the plastic safety tab. I think that's this one. Okay. From backside of the test. Okay. You'll probably push it down. Using both thumbs, press down on the yeah. red part of the device. You can see it on the back that it looks like it's going to, that red part is going to be pushed down to the bottom. So next, we're just going to push that down. And after about one minute, lift the swab slightly and reinsert immediately until it stops. So now we have to wait a minute until uh, this thing activates itself. Then we're going to insert the swab a little farther. So yeah, so, so not to, to trick or deceive anyone, like it actually d did not hurt at all. It just tickled. It's almost like when you had that feeling when you feel like you're about to sneeze, but you don't sneeze. Uh, but it was fun. I had the mask here. <laughs> For show. For show. But normally the person doing this test would be wearing the mask and it would be an N95 mask, this is not an N95 mask. Uh, and um, they'd be wearing gloves, gown, shield. Yeah. Got about a minute. It's pretty close. Let's do it. So we're gonna insert this farther until it stops. And then we can read the results on here. Uh, it says here. It's a boy. <laughs> it says you have a secret admirer. No. Oh. <laughs> That's a fortune cookie I read. It says you have a tendency to do things in a similar, oh no, sorry. that's your horoscope. So right now I've got one green line here, which is the control. Only one green line appears in the test. A positive would have been two lines that appear in the test window. Uh, and you've only got one. So you've got the control went uh, lit up. So most tests will have some kind of control. So yeah, things went properly. And then the signal you're looking for, in this case, is not present. This would be a red line. Uh, where the positive is, and in Dr. Weening's case, it is negative. So he, uh, this Can you show the camera the little line? Look at that. This is our high-end um, graphics. That's pretty cool. So you, and fast. Easy. So you have not been exposed, uh, or you don't, you're not carrying enough antigen for this test to d detect it right now, is basically what it's saying. Right. And these tests are in the high 90 specific for that antigen. If that yeah. antigen is present in a significant amount, they have like in the mid 90s range of sensitivity and specificity. And those are the people that are gonna have the highest chance of spreading it too. That's the true benefit of these rabbit tests. They say, listen, you got a lot of virus. We gotta, we gotta isolate you, we have to contact trace you. And, and the, 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 that first step of getting the swab in the nose is very similar if you do the PCA test, PCR test. Uh, that, that first step, if you put the swab, putting the swab into the nasal pharynx is very similar for the PCR test as it is for this. So we just okay. show it. So actually we're still in the testing facility because we're going to demonstrate um, another kind of test, similar principles, but it's called the one step test, not a zero step yeah, or no, no step. Novabed one step test, same chemicals, just a different package. Uh, this one you have to actually mix uh, some of the stuff You're going to get this open now even to start us. That's all there and ready. Okay, that's gonna go there. So um, these tests, like we said, are still under regulatory approval. Um, uh, they are very sensitive and very specific into the high 90s, uh, but they require a more significant viral load than say a uh, PCR type test. Okay. This is what we like to refer to as payback in the biz. Okay. If. If my arms go numb and I forget my name, back it out a touch. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, so right or left, do you care? Uh, middle. Okay. 
Okay, so I like to go 140. No, just joking. Bullseye. Okay, here we go. So lean back. Okay, and so up we go. Gently. Oh yeah, you're in there. Yeah. There, oh. that's the path there. Oh. Oh, you got it. <laughs> okay. Got it really tickles, yeah. eh? I just had uh, a childhood memory you revoked there. Okay, okay. so okay. now we take this solution. Well, you okay? I know yeah. it, makes, it makes your eyes water a little bit. But it doesn't hurt, right? No, it doesn't hurt. It just okay, so one, makes your eyes two, water. That's a natural three, four, reflex. Five. There you go. So you put the drops so in. So this kit requires a little bit of mixing. And then we put the swab inside. And really what we're doing is we're, we're making like a little solution that then we will take out some of that solution and put it onto the testing strip, which will analyze it. Okay. That's just going to go in there. And then it comes with this handy little pipette. So we squeeze almost like a turkey baster. I felt like you had a turkey baster up my nose. <laughs> yeah, I believe it. Okay, and then I take this and we put three drops. One, two, three. So you can see in the no step kit that we demonstrated, all that mixing and everything was done in the cartridge. This one um, is, uh, requires some of the mixing to be done but it doesn't require any special equipment. It can still be done pretty efficiently. And it can take up to a half hour uh, for this test result to come back. However, uh, usually it does come back within a few minutes. Yeah, so it actually shows there's like a little bar that's advancing showing that the testing is completed as that solution goes across the test strip looking for the answer in the virus. Remember, this has some antibodies in it that is looking for the antigen from the virus. Uh, and then it'll in some way react and create a signal. It can be a red line, a dot, or different test kits will have different signals. This one happens to be a line. So you'll get one it's line for control. Yeah. It's like the test is a key. So the antibody's like a key and a whole bunch of locks are coming by. So test yeah. it, test it, test it. And if it finds one that matches, then you'll get that second line. So again, like the last test, the control or a negative test is one line and a positive test is two lines. So you can see here, this is where we put the solution and then you can see that there is one line, which means that Dr. Zalzal is negative for recent exposure or significant viral load. And in development, you know, this company also has a test kit that has tests for multiple things, testing for influenza, right. uh, RSA, different types of RSV, uh, different types of viruses that um, you can test for, influenza, RSV, uh, COVID, all in one cartridge, right? Very, uh, very useful and so similar, um, way to uh, uh, procure the specimen, but slightly different way to process it. So, um, okay, let's go back to our studio. Back to the studio. It's okay. It's okay, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to cry. <laughs> okay. So there you saw, it. you saw the no step and the one step. You could see that despite being uh, babies and men <laughs> that we still got through the test and there's very limited crying. That was the first time I've had that test. Ditto. I've like never two. had a test like that so, before. And you know what? I don't like needles. No, nobody does. I don't like Q-tips up my nose. <laughs> no. But the test is not that bad. I agree. Please, please use this, our experience, to, to see that it is doable and you can go get it done if you need to get tested. Because I think testing is an important part of our battle against that. Uh, because it protects you, protects your family, protects your coworkers. You know, that's, that's kind of how we can get on top of these things before they spread to hundreds of people. So, yeah. um, and check out our vaccine video. We made yes. a vaccine video uh, explain what the vaccine is hopefully dispel some of the fears you might have about its safety and that. And we've both been vaccinated. Yes. And I would, say, I would say one thing actually about that video, about the AstraZeneca video, there still is a lot of controversy about the blood clot, about the blood clots. So follow your local health guidelines. They're still looking into it, but the majority of people still feel it is a very, very safe vaccine. Yeah. And the test is very safe as well. Absolutely. So if you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel. And don't try this at home. Do, okay. Don't, try don't it go home. sticking a Q-tip up your nose at home, please. The, these are tests that are supposed to be administered by healthcare professionals. Or us. Or us. <laughs> so we, we, and these test kits that are under, uh, going to be available soon. For yeah. now, they look like they're only to be used by a healthcare professional. Right. But go get tested if you need to. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. Stay safe. We'll see you next time.